the popular David Spade. The band bring me out or nothing? Is that what it was? Did you want music here to bring I just you out? I drift out like a homeless guy walking up <laughs> like, no one's stopping me. I like how Spade thought he had to sit with the Danettes. He goes, wait, do I get to sit with you or I got to sit with them? Well, I'm used to watching the show, but this is some ragtag operation, <laughs> right? Uh, if Sandler was here, then you'd have to sit over with the Danettes. If this, they just threw this together, it's pretty nice. Yeah. Are you here for good? No. No, this is just when I come to New York. Racism week, you guys all came to town. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, nice chicken and waffles. I thought that was over. What's going on? Well, no, so, I, do you want any? No, Amari's my friend, though. Yeah, you're friends with Amari Stonemar. Yeah, see, there you go. Yeah. Why are you angry? <laughs> I just coming in hot. <laughs> I know. I don't you, know. You warmed up on Howard Cause Stern? Because I, I, <laughs> I just don't know when we started. I don't know when we started. I walked in, when I went in the photo booth, when I got over here. We're on, though, right? Who's got a better studio? Me or Stern? Oh, that's a tough one. No, Let's it's go not. to the phones. No, it's not. It's um, not tough. Yeah, he does. Are you kidding me? This is a loft. Oh, you do. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know. Right. What about my poofy hair? I have slept no, on hair. it. I know. Yeah, I know. It looks like it's a wig. Yeah. Like a toupee. It looks more like a wig than my other hair looked like a wig. <laughs> Did you try all your stuff on Howard Stern and no. then see what worked and then you're going to use it over here? <laughs> <laughs> you get the clankers that didn't make it. No, I don't know. He actually, we talked more about the, the special and the jokes, which I didn't expect. He usually talks about, you know, other stuff. Well, he's interested in the process mm. of joke telling. Yes, it's very complicated. But are you, like when you sit around to be, do you have moments where you say, I'm going to sit around and be funny? Because it. No, I mean, I have. You have to be in the mood to be funny? Oh, uh. Yeah, I mean, I'm usually, my general disposition is sort of up and uh, sort of funny. I don't turn it totally off. Like, there's some comedians that you might have met over the years that are very quiet. You know what I mean? They really, like, you have to earn it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I've been around comedians that are, like, very, I don't want to say names, but they just shut down completely. And then when you're with them at a dinner party or out, they're like, mm, they're very heavy. And I'm like... Oh, do I have to earn your jokes? I mean, like, they don't give them away for free kind of thing. Uh, so, so I try to just be, you know, sort of the same on and off. Wait, so you don't give away your humor for free? I do. I'm saying that some oh, guys okay. do. Okay. Like, they're like, like, it's so precious. Like, who cares? I just say stupid stuff all the time. Well, there's musicians who will be on shows but then don't want to sing. Exactly. And I'll go, wait a minute. You, this is what you do. Yeah. And then they go, well, I don't want to give it away for free. Yeah. That's sort of like... I don't do that, but there are a bunch of comedians that are very hot and cold like that, and I think it's better to be more normal. But I do think of stuff like, here's a process. When you're on, when I was doing stand-up, I would always sort of observe the world and think of that because it was sort of my job in a dumb way. So I'd write, scribble down things for stand-up. Then when you do a talk show, you sort of think of, oh, that's sort of a funny idea. Everything's a little different. And then, oh, this is uh, a good sketch when I was on SNL. So everything was in a sketch world. Like, I wonder if this would be funny. This would be funny. And then, uh, and then it goes, if I did a movie or something. So that's how it works. Well, when are you going to be funny here? It's going to be in about 10 after the hour. <laughs> <laughs> He's David Spade. <laughs> <laughs> so rude. I was really <laughs> spilling my heart out too. I was like, nobody cares. Yeah, it, it's like a Rubik's cube. But it's like, a, like oh, you know, a supermodel who wants to give you deep thoughts. I don't care. No, but that, that's the only thing I have. I don't have the look, so you have to I know. know what I talk about. Well, you can have humor. I don't need yeah. deep thoughts from you. I do like... No, oh, forget it. Well, no, you can tell no, me. No, I'm saying the girls that are like the ones that I sort of am attracted to, I'm so uh, such a grub worm. I want them to be pretty and sort of funny. But not like hilarious, but sometimes girls are just like Could you date charmingly a comedian? cute. Oh, good question. Let's go to the phones. Um, I think... No, but I do think girls... That are like that. I think uh, Chelsea is sexier because she's funny. Uh, Whitney Cummings, Amy Schumer is funny. And they, I'm sort of drawn Sarah Silverman. I like to hang out with them. I like to talk to them. Because they have sort of a sharp cleverness, not like they don't have to be Robin Williams or Jim Carrey, but just the fact that they is can. Is it hard to hang out with Robin Williams and Jim Carrey? Her. Because they're always <laughs> that on? That was Robin. Um, I, don't think, I don't think Jim is as on. I think he's sort of a quieter one. I think so. Uh, he would be dark and deep if we went. I to think dinner. he's a bit thinky, and I love Jim Carrey. I think he's hysterical. I don't hang out with him that much. We've hung out a little bit, and he's 
super cool, but he's a little quiet. I'm I'm sort of more the John Bonet. They're like, ah, I'm a Yankee Doodle Dan. You know, like I'm putting on my show. It's really sad. Well, Robin actually. Williams though is always on. He, in my brief, I, I've heard he's like that. Yeah, but he is good. <laughs> do it. You know, I I think I try not to be. My my stuff is a little more uh, sort of quieter. Hopefully, I'm sort of loud right now, but. In real life, I don't want to overwhelm people and be like, look at I'm the jokester. It's gross. Well, you're sneaky. Yeah, I you're would rather stealth. be sneaky about it. You're stealth. Well, nobody wants to be with, like, gross-out comedian guy, like, yabba dabba do. <laughs> really? Yeah. That's when, actually when, a joke. Yeah, when, but when, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you should have tried that on Stern. <laughs> I uh, told you, I'm giving you the duds that didn't work No, no, no I, you're doing a damn good job. Uh, <laughs> we had Jerry Seinfeld on. During All right. Super Bowl week, but he was, he critiqued our humor. Oh. He watched one of our bits. Oh, he did? Yeah. But you're pretty funny. But I that think was, he would like you. That was awkward. Uh, he told Paulie he did something wrong uh, when, with a, oh. Joe, a Joe Montana skit. He goes, I, can I be honest? And then he, and then he goes, Here's oh, he what broke you broke it down? Oh, yes. Yeah. And, and part of me appreciated it that he was, you know, it, through his mind, through his prism, I wanted to be able to. That, that's awesome that he did it. Yeah. He was just kind of awkward to hear well, it. Well, it's a little too close to the bone because yeah. you don't want to hear that you're horrible. Yeah. Um, well, but, Paulie was. Well, yeah, but indirectly you. You're the boss. Pretty much. It falls on you. Yes. Um, but uh, the sometimes when I watch stand-ups, I, I like stand-up a lot and I like writing so I can sort of within – it's like name that tune. One joke – for sure, two jokes I can say if someone's good or bad, in my opinion. Really? Yeah, right away. So whatever they're, how the, they're putting it together, delivering it and saying it, everything about it is like a pie chart. And I'm like, okay, that was a good one. Let's see if it's a fluke. Oh, the next one's funny too. Okay, I like this person. But if not, I will drift off. So it's like a movie script. If I read three pages, I see two of their types of jokes, their audition joke, you know, because you get a feel for what they're going to be like. And after... Eight pages, you go, I know I'm not going to like this. But you talked about skits on Saturday Night Live. Yes, sir. The difference between humor that's got to last for a skit, is it too cold in here for it you? It is for precious w face. Would you like to wear my coat? I had a scarf, here, but I was going to get here. so much hassle to, about it. You want me to drape this coat over you, Dave? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Here you go. I think so. <laughs> it's bad enough I look like a girl. <laughs> Now I act like you one. Do have oh, it's so good. So, yeah. Oh, there's a chess king around here. <laughs> anyway, folks. <laughs> okay, so trying to do something for a, a skit of four minutes or however yeah. long it is, as opposed to just doing stand up, writing. Yeah. How di the difference in trying to be well, funny. Well, when I got to SNL, I was actually not happy. I was hired as a writer performer. I did not want that. I just wanted to be a performer. And Rob Schneider and I got hired together. And it was, I was sort of mad where he goes, you know, Chevy Chase, these guys get hired as writer performers. But I didn't know how to write anything but stand up. So you don't realize a sketch is a whole different world, beginning, middle, end, and you can't use more than one or maybe two sets. Everything about it was learning. So to compete with everyone in SNL, I mean, Conan O'Brien was a writer, Robert Smigel, all, Bob Odenkirk. Jack Handy. Those are those are some funny people. Oh, they're all good. And great writers. Of course. Yeah. Along with Mike Myers writing his own stuff and Who intimidated Dana, you on Saturday Dennis Night? Dennis Miller. Um Oh, pretty much everybody because you know, I lived, I rented a room from Kevin Nealon. He lived in a house in LA with Dana Carvey and another comedian, Bob Duback. So Dana lived above the garage, Kevin and the other guy had a room. So I rented Kevin's while he did SNL just because I was trying to do stand-up in L.A. And I met him, and I liked Kevin Nealon's uh, comedy. And then I never even crossed my mind I would ever get on Saturday Night Live. Plus, there was Dana, a better version of me. So I thought, he looks like me, and he's really good at characters. I'm not really a character guy. Do you do impersonations? Well, yes, I do. <laughs> I don't even know who that <laughs> is. It's Elmer Fudd. <laughs> no. Can you do Sandler? Yeah, babu. No, I can't. <laughs> I used to do Michael J. Fox. I go, hey, uh, you got to give me a minute on this here, Sarge. <laughs> oh, Christ, Mallory. Mal. It was him in Casualties of War. Oh, is that what it was? Yeah, they were, like, attacking this girl, and he's like, come on, she's just a farm girl, Sarge. 
you don't have a big market for Michael J. Fox. I do not. <laughs> no, you don't. You don't. And it's, yeah, I that was one of my SNL. They let me do that. You know how humiliating this is? I was on the show and I didn't have any game. I had like, I did Tom Petty, Michael J. Fox. I barely did anybody. And uh, when Michael J. Fox is coming to the show, I go, finally, I'll get to do something, you know, because it's a one. It's my one move, you know. <laughs> and so and Dana Carvey was such a big star in there. So Lauren brought me in. He goes, you know, Michael J. Fox in the show this week, and you did such a good impression. Could you coach Dana? <laughs> oh, no. <Yeah. laughs> I go, oh, my God. Well, this is part of the writer-performer. This was the oh. writer, writer portion of that. Yeah, they wanted me to write for Dana, and, and, everyone, <laughs> and everyone was so... I, I, I Just to try to get a sketch that didn't reek of dog shit at read-through. Wait, 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 wait. Can I not say that? No, this isn't the Stern Show. Oh, that's right. Okay. Let's take um, a break. Let's take a break. I have to remind somebody. Can of the we rules. beep that? Is it too late? It's just a little too late for that. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, we'll take it reek a break. Of poop. Um, no. I was going to ask you if you wanted to stay another no, segment. No, 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 I do. I, oh, you do. Let me redeem myself. <laughs> okay, you're going to be funny the next segment. No promises. Okay. I'm going right. to write some stuff. All right. All right. Uh, David Spade, his uh, Comedy Central special, mm. uh, Mike Fake Problems, <laughs> debuts Sunday at uh, 10 Eastern on the uh, Comedy Central. We'll come back with David Spade. And ask him, uh, when can you start with the uh, Donald Sterling jokes? Like, how soon is soon enough? Right uh, after the break. Right after the break. <laughs> Find out right after the break. This, uh, you That's when they start. This is the Dan Patrick Show. David Spade is still with us. Yes, Twitter. Uh, Twitter world. I'm sorry, Twitter. Yes, that Spade uh, swore he wouldn't swear, and you swore. I didn't really know the parameters here. What? You watch the show all the time. I know, but I just think no one's cool. They don't swear. That's what cool people do. <laughs> so I go, I'm going to show them who's cool. What was I saying? I clean up. It was about read through and I handed yeah, sketches it, 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 yeah. and I just didn't want them to stand out as bad. So just to get one where no one really raised an eyebrow, like not that it would ever get on, but just so that it didn't stand out as horrible, that took six months. Yeah. And then anyway, that subject sort of faded out. Go ahead. All right. So uh, Donald Sterling jokes, does that start? Is well, it? yesterday, you know, I'm white. If you people at home that aren't, if they're not watching. watching right now, so yesterday it's very tricky because even black comedians have huge chunks of race jokes, and I can't have one joke. You know what I mean? You really cannot. So that's always I'm a little envious. Like in that world, wait, why can't you have? I just can't. I, I'll tell you. Yesterday on Twitter, I said. Uh, I don't even use my clippers for my hair anymore. That's how mad I am. <laughs> I said boycott, you know, hashtag. And immediately F you, like the people Whoa, that. Really? They just think it's a free shot. Like, is that racist? <laughs> I can't tell. But I'm going after you anyway. Just I'll worry about it later. So I I don't know. It's a very tough. I mean, this whole subject, it, it's so heavy and serious. But white comedians can't. I can't even talk. I can't even comment on it. It's so scary. Unless you're Jeff Ross or. Or Joan Rivers. Or but something. don't you get to the point, you have to not have a conscience. You just have to say, all right, Well, this you is have to be willing to take the yeah. flack. And, you know, I do sometimes broader shows like sitcoms. I'm not allowed to. Now that I'm not on it, I could. But I'm never really like that. But I do have opinions sometimes. You just, it, the, the fear of being racist is so terrifying that you can't joke or you can't do anything. You know what I mean? But I thought as a comedian. Yeah, I, I would think that's. You live in a vacuum. It is it, tough. The problem is other people don't live in, in a vacuum that are listening to you or watching you. So they, they have that response immediately where you can say, look, I'm a comedian. This right. is what I do. I would think that, I mean, around the comedians, each other, they say anything. And no one gets offended. Who's the funniest guy? Wow, that's tough. But that you've been around, not, not when they're on camera. Oh, not when they have something written for them. You know who's pretty quick? Uh, well, Rock is always very funny. Uh, Nick Swartzen's always very funny on his feet. Um, there, I like the guys that are really quick and sharp and thought out and not. Nick Schwartzen's. Not, I mean, not so thought out, just quick. Schwartzen is funny. He's such a weirdo, and uh, we we're, he we're great buddies back home. He's funny, but, but he, I, you can just tell with people quickly when you're with them, like who's got <laughs> game. And I'm like, like you with basketball, like you can tell. Yeah, like I, I go know. back to that. Yeah, okay, yeah. But um, what was it? Doing? Oh, like the girl in the whole thing. I always think she, you know, the girl with a visor down her face. The Donald Sterling's chick? Oh, yeah. 
the chick that's not, the not she, why is she hiding now? She's at the Laker games with him, but but now she's like, uh, but she, I thought, I heard that she got all this free stuff from him, and then the wife said it's community property, so I'm suing you for uh, like that. Back. That's where I'm getting you, not on the <laughs> obvious thing that you're the mistress. So I'm getting you back on this technicality, and then she says to him, "I'll get even." Yeah. Oh, is that overkill? Do you go not to- bring a knife to a gunfight? <laughs> like, get even. Like, are you serious? Ruin your life. Like, it's over. And I like her 100 hours of tapes. What is she doing all day? She doesn't have a job. I've, you know, yes. She's obviously getting everything covered. Yes. She's got a per diem or something. Do you go to Clipper games? I have heard about them. Yeah, you have. Yeah. So you're a Laker. You're, you're well, like a you know, I'm from runner. Phoenix. So if I go to a Laker game, I'm a fake phony actor at the yes. game. And then if I go to, then if I jump to the Clippers and it's really bad, <laughs> uh, but whoever's start. winning. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the Clippers, you know, that's, that's, well, you know, when I was a kid, I loved the dolphins. And then when they started losing, I switched to the Steelers so fast. <laughs> and I was like, I love the Steelers. My mom's like, you're such a phony. Uh, you the, should go into showbiz. David Spade, my fake problems debut Sunday, May 4th at 10 Eastern on comedy central. Yeah. Those jokes are actually thought out. So it's not they like are. here where they're like half baked. Like somebody wrote these for you. Not like I wrote them, but it's not like off the top of my head here where things aren't clicking. You're you're turning fifty. Shut up. Yeah, whatever. Man. Well, one day, yeah. I'm not there. It's when are you when are you turning fifty? <laughs> July, dude. Oh, wow. Thanks. Goodbye, chicks. What kind of part <laughs> <laughs> Do you lie about your age to girls? I just try to keep girls away from the internet. <laughs> your Wikipedia page? I go, hey, do you have the internet? They're like, yeah. And I'm like, uh. What do you think of Cl- Clooney got engaged? Does that help you? Clooney, I don't. I'm really funny <laughs> how that affects me. I know it'll affect me somehow. Actually, we just had James Franco was on the uh, show without saying names where I was before this. And uh, he was getting grilled about that, about, about being single. Oh, okay. It's not cute anymore. All that stuff. But he was saying he wasn't on that Lindsay Lohan list. I was trying to say I was, but I was omitted. <laughs> I'm trying to get on the list. Did you ever socialize with Lindsay Lohan? Talk about an all-star game. Have you seen that list? Yes. Oh, my yes, God. Yes. She just goes for a certain type. Famous type. Famous and good looking. Did you ever her... socialize with Lindsay Lohan? I have seen her out, yeah. Lilo? And her mom. Her mom actually asked me for my number once. There's some project was happening wink 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 yeah i didn't know I was like, <laughs> it's like those well you know those pornos where they have like the mother daughter you've seen them yeah i saw one as a joke i looked at it <laughs> and um stayed for 10 hours but i uh, sound like fritzy it's funny because they have like the cougar it's supposed to be mother daughter it's not don't worry fans yeah. but the guy i just saw the guy kept eyeballing the 18 year old going get back here cuz the, the cougar was like let me take out <laughs> reverse cow i'll show you how it's done and he's like no no she was just here why did you push her off and then pulling her by the foot she's going can uh, i get my 300 get up this? front how do we get to this? oh lindsay lohan yeah um, <laughs> uh, fritzy's got mock headlines about donald sterling is that right fritzy be I careful do. okay but i'm going to let you get best five for spade i'll let him be this is you're going to be Jerry Seinfeld. You're going to judge oh, our, okay. our humor here. All right, and be honest. All right, Fritzy, ready? Well, I was very fair about that other sketch you did. Yeah, the Joe Montana sketch. Yeah, yeah, where you said it was slow in a three out of ten, maybe. <laughs> I said with some fixes, it'll be a three, <laughs> three out, out of ten. It's <laughs> kind of mean. Uh, it's kind of mean. All right, Fritzy, ready? Here Five we go. mock headlines. Donald Duck, look out! Silver drops the hammer. Silver bells, Donald Duck. silver bells, it's wait, Christmas. Wait, wait, one at a time, dude. I'm still trying to get the first one. Wait, how long does it take you to process so it was, that? It Donald Duck du- silver. Donald, Donald duck. duck. Like he's got a duck for cover. Donald Duck. <sighs> All right, I can't see the commas from here. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Donald Duck. Look out, silver drops the hammer. Okay. That one's out. Okay. Silver right, hammer. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Silver bells, silver bells, it's Christmas time in Lob City. Go to the next one, Fritzy. Fast forward to the winners. <laughs> Winning. Masking tape. Nowhere to hide with that recording. <laughs> clip, clip, hooray. NBA makes racist own up. Okay. Damn, it's quiet. Here. No, it's good. Should he staples or should he go? Leave before clash <laughs> with fans. That's pretty good. Minority report. Time to cruise on out Sterling. All right, that's good. That Thanks. sounds like six. Yeah, it was. 
He started scrambling. Yeah, just, you know, have, you, have, have you scrambled before on stage when you've had a bad joke and like, oh yeah, like I gotta, I gotta redeem myself. So you go deep in. Oh, I go to your the, home runs. I go to the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I fast forward. Like if I do a show that's horrible, I just jump ahead. But then I run out too quick. That's a big watch you got on today, quick, dude. By the way. Oh, 70 grand. What'd you ask me? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, the, you know it's funny. Chris Rock, I just heard the story that he did The Tonight Show, and his first show didn't do great, so he jumped to his last one to get the crowd going, and they went, bah, nah, nah, nah. and so he only did two jokes, because they you give the band your last joke to oh, play no. you off. <laughs> and he goes, what's up? <laughs> and then he walked over, and they're like, that was it, and it was 35 seconds. He's uh, David Spade. Wait, we didn't. What? Which one was the best one? None of them. I had one. Can I do one more? Okay. And then that's it. Okay, that's I got to take a break. Okay. Got, yeah. Insta bam. Easy to picture NBA without big mouth bigot. Okay. All tens. I don't know which one to pick. There's uh, no David's new one hour special, hopefully better than Fritzy's mock headlines. David Spade, my fake problems debut Sunday at 10 Eastern on Comedy Central. Yeah. Thanks for stopping by. We did good, right? Yeah, we did all right. This is a is this one of those practice shows to see if you, yeah, yeah. If you get the gig? Yeah. Yeah. Well wait, hold on. Oh, okay. yeah, wait, I'm gonna go to break and then you can get up and leave. Get um, my phone out of my he's phone. David Spade. <laughs> David Spade. Uh, your phone call's coming up. Reggie Miller will join us in a half hour from now. This is the Dan Patrick Show. That was what I waited for. <laughs>